All right, Project 2025. Project 2025. We talked last week about the fact that they want to get, a, um, get rid of the Department of Education. That, that's their plan. That's their plan. They start on page two, uh, 319 talking about the fact that they want to abolish the Department of Education. Uh, what is it? Uh, page 320. Uh, second paragraph reads, although uh, student loans and grants should ultimately be restored to the private sector, or at least the federal government should revisit its role as a guarantor rather than direct lender, federal post-secondary education investments should bolster economic growth and, recipients and, and, and recipient institutions should nourish academic freedom and embrace intellectual diversity. Last thing they want is diversity. That has not, however, been the track record of federal higher education policy or of the many institutions of higher education that are hostile to free expression, open academic inquiry, and American exceptionalism. There's no such thing as American exceptionalism. What that means is Amer because you are an American, you are greater than any other citizen of any other country. That's what American exceptionalism means. There's something, you are exceptional simply because you were born in America. Yeah. Ain't nothing exceptional. God doesn't smile on America any more than he smiles on any other country <laughs> in this world. But that's the foolishness that they push and we buy into it. They talk about traditional colleges here, uh, talk about these work, uh, di uh, 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 these uh, woke programs, uh, the flagship of this un of this state, LSU, on last week, uh, they sh they've been working on it in a while, but now they've gotten rid of all of their diversity programs, gotten rid of all of them, unless you can shoot a ball, <laughs> kick a ball, right. catch a ball, yeah. run with a ball. Then, y'all come on in. Conservative white people only see black people as entertainment. That, 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 that's, that's the only place where they see us, where we can entertain them. We can sing for them. We can dance for them. We can play sports for them. But other than that, there's nothing we can do for them. They do not consider us their equal. God created all of us in his image and in his likeness. And he does not place as one of us because of the color of our skin or our intellect or anything else over anyone else. Everyone is accepted as a child of God if we accept Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. They go on to talk about what was it in 19? Where am I? I want to, uh, we can see what they're attacking. Uh, where am I? The, the uh, Department of Public Education was started at that is uh, President Lyndon Johnson signed into law the Civil Rights Act of 1960-64 after Congress reached a consensus that the mistreatment of black Americans was no longer tolerable and merited federal response. In the case of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965 and Higher Education Act of 1965, Congress sought to improve educational outcomes for disadvantaged students by providing additional uh, compensatory funding for low-income children and lower-income college students. What they're trying to do is get rid of everything that came out of the civil rights movement. That's the plan. Go back and look at everything that they're attacking. Make America great again. They want to go back to the 1950s. That's when America was great as far as they are concerned. This document and is laughable. Uh, they have these charts in this document. Uh, trends in fourth and eighth grade reading. Uh, it, it goes, uh, let 
when did they start? In 1992, uh, where it's around two, 260%. It goes up to as high as probably right around 275 or so. Uh, then it begins to dip. In the years 2009, 2011, 2013, 2015, we see that it goes up. In 2017 and 19, it goes down. Obama was in office from 09 to 15. It went up. Trump came in office in 17, it goes down. We see this in all of their charts. Everything that deals with education, I don't know why they put it in here. Oh, I know why. They didn't think we were going to look at it. <laughs> you want to hide something from black folk? Put it in a book. All of these charts show that improvements are made when Obama was in office because he was making sure that the funds were there and the right people were in place to make sure that our kids were being educated properly. But the moment Trump comes into office, it all goes down. Why? Because he's putting crazy people in place who shouldn't even be in the positions that they're in, who could care less about the education. They're trying to destroy instead of trying to build up. But they put it in a book. Read it for yourself. And get out and vote. We must vote. If we don't vote, this stuff is going to happen. And the thing is, they're not hiding it. They put it in a book for us to read and see for ourselves. So if he wins and they do it, we can't say, oh, we didn't know they was going to do that. Yeah, yes, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, they put it in a book. Let's make sure that we get out and vote. Amen? Amen. And encourage others to get out and vote and vote in the right manner. Amen. Right, it says, I still, still means that maybe I shouldn't, but I still have a praise. Maybe you don't, but I still have a praise. After all that I have been through, I still have a praise could have been dead sleeping in my grave but I still have a praise still have a praise Callaway. I might be full of a whole lot of other stuff, but I still got a praise inside of me. Doesn't matter what else is going on, I still have a praise down in my soul. Book of Genesis, Genesis 29, Genesis 29. We're going to start reading that verse 1, Genesis 29 and 1. I still have a praise. You ought to take that with you this week. You know, when they cut you off in traffic, just say to yourself, I still have a praise. And they close that door in your face, I still have a praise. Even when they cuss you out, just lift your hands and say, I still have a praise because I want to do something else, but I still have a praise inside of me. 
Verse 1, verse 1, verse 1 of Genesis 29 reads, Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the sons of the east. He looked and saw a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep were lying there beside it. For from that well they watered the flocks. Now the stone of the mouth of the well was large. When all the flocks were gathered there, they would then roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep and put the stone back in place on the mouth of the well. Jacob said to them, my brothers, where are you from? And they said, we are from Haran. And he said to them, do you know Lebanon? And they said, yes, we know him. And he asked, is it well with him? And they said, it is well. And here is Rachel, his daughter, coming with the sheep. And he said, behold, it is still high day. Is it not time for the livestock and the flocks to be gathered uh, and, 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 and wait, no, this is another thing. Gather, water the sheep, and go pasture them. But they said, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered and they roll the stone away from the mouth of the well. Then we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. It came about when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Leban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Leban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went up and rolled the stone from the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Leban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Amen. Verse 10 reads, it came about when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Leban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Leban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went up and rolled the stone from the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Leban, his mother's brother. I want to share from the thought Stop waiting on others to do for you what you can do for yourself. Stop, stop waiting on others to do for you what you can do for yourself. With our heads bowed, Father, speak to your people. Amen. Recorded. For our hearing and understanding today is this story of Jacob, the son of Isaac and Rebekah, arriving in Haran, the home of his mother, looking for his future wife. Isaac, of course, was the son of Abraham and Sarah. Y'all remember it was Abraham who, I, who God spoke to and said, get up and leave your father's house and go to a land that I'm going to show you. And when you do this, you're going to bless the entire world. Well, Abraham has done that. And at this point, uh, 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 his, his, his now grandson and granddaughter-in-law find themselves in Bathsheba. And as they are in Bathsheba, it's at this point that Isaac and Rebekah have two sons, one Esau and the other Jacob. Now, Esau was his daddy's favorite, and Rebekah was, her, was his mother's favorite. Excuse me. Jacob was Rebekah's favorite. Now, this was no secret. Esau knew that he could go to Isaac and get whatever he wanted. Yeah, yeah. Jacob knew if his daddy Isaac said no, he could go to mama, yeah. and she would say yes. Yeah. This was a dysfunctional family. 
this family had issues. This, 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 this recipe of a family, if not corrected, would turn into what we used to call, when I was a younger man, a hot mess. This family, if the problem is not corrected, where mama is playing favorites with one and dad is playing favorites with the other, will end in disaster. You guys say, man, I'm right about it. And you try and play one of your children against the other child, then you are playing with fire. And nobody is going to win. Here we are, here we are, you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can look through this yourself and uh, you can find uh, how dysfunctional this family was. And see, I can't go through it all today, but that's what Sunday school is for. Yes, Amen, lights. That's what Bible study is for. I, I can't go through it all in a 15 or 20 minute sermon, but if you come to Sunday school, if you read your Bible, you can get it. Amen. Isaac wanted to bless Esau because Esau was his favorite. So Isaac is on his deathbed. Just, just, just a little quick, quick, quick overview. He's on his deathbed, and he calls his son Esau. He says, son, I'm going to bless you. But what I need you to do for me is go out into the fields, and you know that meat I like, yeah, I, I, I need you to go kill one of those deer. I, I, I don't know what it was. Just, just go kill it, he says, and bring it back and cook it. And when I eat it, I'm going to bless you. Esau said, cool. I, I ain't got no problem with that. He grabs his bow. He grabs his arrow. And he goes out hunting. I did tell, tell y'all that this family was dysfunctional. See, what... Isaac and Esau did not realize is that Rebecca was eavesdropping on their conversation. And Rebecca made up in her mind that no, Esau ain't going to get the blessing. He ain't the one I like. I, I, I like Jacob more than I like Esau. So she said, come, come here, come, come here, come here, son. Come, come, come here, come here. Uh, your dad is scheming with your brother. And what your daddy told your brother to do was to go out and kill, you know, that kind of meat he liked, and then to bring it back and to cook it for him, and he's going to bless him. But uh, we going to change that right now because I want you to get the blessing. Yeah. She says, so what I need you to do is go out there, you know, go around back and get one of those goats. Just, just kill the goat. Bring the goat to me, and then I'm going to fix the goat so it tastes like the meat your daddy like. Uh, some of y'all don't hear me. Rebecca could burn in the kitchen because you don't take domestic meat and make it taste like wild meat unless you know what you're doing. Rebecca said, look, I'm going to take this goat. I'm going to doctor this boat. Either Rebecca was a great cook or in his old age, uh, Isaac's taste buds wasn't as good as they used to be. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm the y'all. I'm the y'all. Uh, 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 but, 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 but. He does exactly what his mama tells him to do. He doesn't think, man, I don't, I don't think we ought to do this to daddy. He says, no, I, I want the blessing. So he does exactly as his mom says. His mom comes. She says, okay, put on Esau's clothes. Esau's still hunting, y'all. Esau out there thinking, you know, he probably could have killed two or three of that, you know, the animals that his daddy liked, but he was trying to find the best one. He's looking for the biggest one. He's still out there. Meanwhile, uh, Rebecca then took the goat. She's cooked the goat, and she said, you put on Esau clothes because your daddy can't see the way he used to see it. Time bring on a change. It does. It does. It bring on a change. See, you put on his clothes, and uh, 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 say, but but but, Mama, uh, you know Esau. Esau hairy. You know he he's, he he's, he Esau thick. You know in the hair. She says, Well, you take that goat skin, put it on your arms, and when your daddy try and touch you, he's gonna feel the hair of the goat, and he gonna think that is 
Esau. Again, age brings about a change. Because not only could he not see, well, he had to reach out and touch his hands, but apparently his hearing was bad because he couldn't distinguish between the voice of one son and the other. Yeah, I'm telling y'all. Getting old ain't always easy. It, it, it's just not. It, 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 brings on, it brings on a change. But they worked it out, this dysfunctional family. And Jacob got exactly what he wanted. His daddy blessed him. Now, some blessings come with a problem. See, 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 when you go around scheming and call yourself tricking people, Getting over on people to get what you want. You just might get it, but something else going to come with it. I wonder why you catching so much hell. I don't understand. Well, stop being low down. Stop trying to trick people. Trust God. Do what God has called you to do. I got a witness in here somewhere. I ain't got to trick nobody. All I got to do is wait on God to take care of me. He got the blessing, but it came with a problem. Because when Esau came back and found out what happened, Esau said, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. And sure enough, as he breathing and I'm breathing, when I see that Negro next time, I'm going to kill him. I promise I'm going to kill him. And he wasn't playing. And Jacob knew he wasn't playing. And Rachel knew he wasn't playing. Right to say, boy, you, you got to get out of here. You, you, you got to go. And, and she, she goes to Isaac and say, look, I don't want my baby to be marrying these women here in Bathsheba. I, I need him to go home and marry one of his own. So they sent him home uh, supposedly to go looking for a wife. But uh, Rachel sent him home to save his life. That's just an overview now. Go back. This is chapter 29. You, you, you go back and start at chapter 25 and work your way up. You can get the uncut version of what I just gave you, all right? Matter of fact, go back to 12, and, 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 and you, you, you can go all the way back to the point where God calls Abraham and tells him to leave where he is. But here we are. Here we are. This brings us up right here, verse 29, verse 1. This is where we are. We see Jacob has arrived at his destination. And verse 2 tells us what he saw. He saw a well in a field, three flocks of sheep lying in the field, and a stone covering the well. At verse 3, we see what he learns. He learns that all the flocks had to be in the field together. At that point, the stone would be rolled away from the front of the well. The sheep would drink, and then they would put the stone back in place. That's what Jacob learned in verse 3. Now let's see what we can take from verse 3. The only thing that stood between the sheep and the water they needed to survive was a stone. A rock. They were standing in the front of their blessing. Their blessing was sitting in front of them. And the only thing that prevented them from getting to their blessing was a rock. Y'all ain't hear me? The only thing between them and their blessing was a rock. Blessing was here, they were here, and a rock was in the middle. Only thing, only thing, look, I just stood up long enough today to tell you, everybody in here, individually and collectively, as a church, that our blessing, your blessing, my blessing, our blessing is right in front of us. Only question is, what's in between us and our blessing? That, that, that's all that I, I just I, I want you to take that take that with you now when you, whatever else you take take that with you that your blessing is here you ain't got to go
looking around and trying to figure out, baby, it's right there in front of you. That's where it is. It's right where you are. But there's something that's preventing you from getting to where God wants you to be. The question is, what's the impediment? What's the rock as an individual? What is it, the person, the place, or the thing that's preventing me from getting to the blessing that's right in front of me? Now, here's the other thing. Some of us, some of us don't realize that the blessing is right here. Look, that thing that you, you, you've been wishing for, crying about, praying about, God is saying, it's right there. But you can't see it because you're still crying about it. And that's when you got to ask God to open your eyes. God, open my eyes that I might see physically, mentally, and spiritually what you have for me. So when I see it, I can better uh, move in to where you would have me to be. What's that thing? What's that thing? What, what, what is it? If we talk to God. He'll show you. I got a witness in here somewhere. That when you talk to him, he'll show you and show you how to get there. Show you what you need to do to receive what the Lord has for you. Verses 4 through 8. Jacob goes into conversation with the shepherds waiting there with their flocks. Look. They're waiting for the stone to be rolled away. And he discovers in this conversation that he's in Haran. He's, he, he, his uncle uh, is there, his mother's brother, uh, that he's doing well. Uh, and they point Jacob towards this good-looking, beautiful black sister who's approaching with her sheep and say to Jacob that's Rachel that's Levin's daughter right there and Jacob looks at Rachel his first cousin takes look, one look at Rachel and tries to run all the other brothers off it, it happens right here look look he, he, they, they say that's Rachel he says uh, shouldn't y'all have watered y'all sheep by now why y'all still hanging around this well? Should, should, y'all, y'all, look, look it's, it's, it's high noon. Y'all should have watered them sheep and been gone by now. Why y'all still here? They tell Jacob that they have to wait until everybody else's sheep is there. And then they're going to push the stone away so that the sheep can have the water. Second thing, second thing, and I want you to take what you today is stop waiting on someone else to do for you what you can do for yourself. The only thing standing between them and the water was a rock. And instead of them just pushing that rock out of the way, they were waiting on somebody else to come and do for them what they could have done for themselves. Now the rock was big. It, it, look, it, 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 it was indeed, uh, verse 2 tells us it was a large rock. But baby, let me tell you, when you're walking with God, there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing bigger than God. But you've got to learn how to trust God and do it for yourself. It is, I don't know. I don't know, Redwood, what our rock is. Yes, but what I know is yes, if we push together, yes, we can get that rock yes, out of our way. Yes, if we just push together, yes, God will give us the strength yes, to move the rock to receive the blessing yes, that he has in store for us. But there's some people who just going to wait, spend all their lives just waiting on somebody else to move their rock. There's some folks just waiting on the government to feed them and put clothes on their back. 
when they could get up and get a job and feed themselves. But you're waiting on somebody else. There's some folk who waiting. Look, they're complaining about how dangerous it is in their neighborhoods. And, you know, uh, you, we, 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 we got to call the police. And while you waiting on the police, you could have got out there and took care of that yourself. You could have simply said, not on my block, not in my neighborhood. Band together and say, I don't care where y'all do it, but you're not going to do it around here. Some people are waiting. Waiting. As a matter of fact. They'll call you and say, come pick me up and take me here and take me there. Or when you go, come get me. When they could just get up and get in their own car. Get on their own two feet. And go to where they have to go to receive what God has for them. But they're waiting. Can I tell you, some people, you're going to be waiting. Amen, lights. You call some people at the wrong time. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. Look, you, you call me at the wrong time. You're going to be waiting. I'm, I'm just telling you. I, I, I can't do it, baby. I'm telling you, I, I can't. I, I, I ain't got time. I, 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 tomorrow, maybe, but not today. But here's the thing. God doesn't make us wait. That's why you don't have to wait on anybody. When the time is right, God will say move. And all we have to do is move. Amen. We're done. Verse 10. It came about that when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Leban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Leban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went up and rolled the stone from the mouth of the whale and watered the flocks of Leban, his mother's brother. Final thing I want you to take with you today, that in order to move the rock that's preventing us from reaching our blessing is we must be motivated. Amen. We need motivation. Jacob looked at Rachel and was motivated. I say, man, I'm right about it. Jacob looked at Rachel and said, oh, Lord. Uh-uh. I ain't about to let this woman, uh-uh, no, no, no. Look, look, scripture tells us later, scripture says that Rachel was beautiful. Scripture says Rachel was a good-looking woman, but I ain't got to read scripture to know that Rachel was good-looking. All I got to do is see how Jacob acts when he sees Rachel's coming. First thing Jacob does, he tells them, brothers, it's time for y'all to go. Y'all need to get on from around here. And then he looks at Rachel and he said, look, I'm going to get this stone out of the way. Look, look, here, here it is, here it is. Let me just talk to the husbands in here. Let, 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 me, let me just talk to the husbands in here. Brothers, right, brother, truth, you know, just, just go on, tell the truth. Go on, tell the truth. First time you looked at that woman, first, oh, Lord, you looked at her, and you know, she, you know, that's my wife right there. You already made up in your mind. I don't know if she was a woman. She might have been a little girl. Depending on how long y'all been together, but you took one look, and you said to yourself, I'm motivated right now. I am motivated to make that mind right there. I got a witness, brother, somewhere in here. Don't leave me hanging, brothers. You were motivated when you looked at her and you said to yourself, whatever I got to do, got to get a job, let me go get a job. I got to get a car, let me go get a car. I got to stop hanging out with these Negroes. Negroes, y'all got to go because I'm motivated to get what I want. Jacob was motivated. When he looked at Rachel, sisters, y'all got superpower. Y'all motivate us, brothers. Please motivate the brothers to do the right thing. Please, 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 please. Because some sisters motivate brothers to do the wrong thing. You use your power to get them to act up instead of using your power to get us to do the right thing. You guys say, man, I'm right about it. Use your superpower to help a brother be the best brother that he can be. What 
what's our, what's our motivation? What is the motivation that we need individually and collectively to do what needs to be done to bless ourselves and to be a blessing to others? Look at Jacob. He pushed that rock out of the way. Not so he could be blessed, but so that Rachel and the sheep could receive the blessing. Now, truth be told, you know, he, he, he thought he was going to get something out of this. But he said, what do I have to do to make sure that Rachel and her sheep don't leave here unnourished? They, they don't leave here with what they need. What's our motivation? What are we doing to bless and help somebody else? Is our motivation to save souls? It should be. Is our motivation to, to look out for the well-being of others? It should be. Is our motivation to protect the weak? Among us, the children, the elderly, those who've been marginalized, it should be. It's our motivation to make sure that our children and our people are properly educated so no one can take advantage of them. Is that our motivation? It should be. Is our motivation to make sure that everyone connected to us at least has a chance to meet God for themselves and to have a life-changing, soul-saving experience with the God that we serve? That should be our motivation. Is our motivation to make sure that we lift up those who have fallen down? It should be. Is our motivation to take someone who's in pain and give them some joy? It should be. Is our motivation to make sure that one who is crying themselves to sleep every night will go to bed tonight knowing that everything is going to be all right it should be is our motivation to make sure that God is able to reach as many people as he possibly can through us and our ministry and our lives it should be Redwood our motivation should be to love the Lord our God with everything that we have and to love others as we love ourselves all I'm saying to you is we must have the motivation to be who God has created us to be. Have I got one somebody in this crowd who can testify I've been properly motivated and I just want to do what the Lord says do. Have I got one somebody who can say I ain't going to wait around on nobody else to do for me what I can do for myself. If I got to do it all by myself, baby, I'm going to push this rock out of the way. I'm going to push this stone out of the way. I'm going to push him out of my way. I'm going to push her out of my way. I'm going to do whatever it takes with God on my side to be who God has created me. Me to be. Stop waiting on somebody else to do for you what you can do for yourself. Amen. Jacob said, I'm going to move this stone so Rachel can be blessed. Our motivation is not to be blessed ourselves. God's going to take care of that. But our motivation ought to be to bless somebody else. Maybe there's someone here, someone here right now who recognizes that God is blessing you right now. And he keeps on blessing you over and over and over again because he's just that kind 
of God. But we got to put our lives in his hand. Allow him to do as he pleases. Knowing that his will is always best. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Candidate for baptism. One by Christian experience. Looking for a church home. And the Holy Spirit is saying to you, Redwood is your church home. It's not a perfect church. But it's perfect for you. Where you can fit in. Be blessed. Use your gifts and talents to the glory of God. Is there one? Is there one? We glorify. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. Our final plea. Our final plea. I just want to say thank you. We certainly want to give you the opportunity. To move you now. Get the glory. You, you get, get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. Thank you. you get the glory. You get the glory. Amen. I was to offer you yours to receive. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. You get the glory. You get the glory. Get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. closed. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for allowing us to gather once more to eat of this bread and drink of this cup that represents the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We pray now, God, that you would bless these elements, that they would remind us of how awesome you are, that you sacrifice yourself that we might live life in abundance and eternal life when we leave this place. Now, God, search us, hearts and minds. Remove anything that is, of, that is not of you. Lord, we request more and more of you and less and less of what this world has to offer. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Oh, you are my strength. Yes, you are, Lord. Strength. Strength. 
strength. You are. 